Hey buddy, and welcome back to Mega Miniatures. Today I'm going to be painting the Necron Royal Warden that came with the first edition of the Imperium magazine. Okay, I'm starting this guy off with a base of Rune Lord Brass. That was actually the paint that came with the second edition of the magazine. I actually sprayed the model first with a Halfords white primer. There are loads of other white primers on the market, including the Citadel ones. But at the moment, we were still in lockdown and I didn't wasn't able to get hold of any of that. And the only other white I had was a Wraithbone colour. Didn't really suit what I was going for. And I really wanted the white, so when I bring in the uh, Tesseract Glow later on, it can pop and look really good on the model. You may notice I'm using a few odd angles while painting this model. I was trying to keep him under the camera and getting that right. I'm still figuring out how to do this properly. I'm wondering whether to film in 4K and then to zoom in at 1080, as when it zoomed in a little bit like this, some things are out of focus. So Necrons are really nice models. They look great. They are a pain to put together. One style of video I'm trying to look at is whether I show the full process, like I'm doing here, or whether I just break it down and say, right, I painted this, and then cut and show you it done. It's another version and I think it's very popular on YouTube. It's something I'm going to experiment with and see what you guys think. But for the moment, you know, this one works for me. I really like seeing a whole process and knowing there's struggle and effort put into every model. This one in particular took me five hours in total to paint. I'm not the fastest. I'm still getting used to all this again after so many years of being away. But I'm excited to see where, where it can take me. So it's really important to make sure that you don't just do one layer with your paint. Some people will do three, four even. What I was using was a tile to try and thin this paint down very slightly. I would normally use a wet palette, but with metallic paints I didn't want to risk that wrecking the foam underneath. So I ended up doing about three layers on this guy in the end with the Rune Lord Brass. It makes the metallic a lot stronger and really shows off the details. Plus. When I bring in some Nuln oil later as a shade, it can find all these darker areas that are hard to bring out with this metallic. I wanted a lighter metallic to use on the chest piece, so I went for a Retributor armor. It is brighter, but again, I know I'm going to be dulling it down slightly with the Nuln oil. In the end, I actually used some Abaddon Black in certain areas to really bring that down. I think it's a nice contrast, it's still in the metallic family, but it just creates a separation from this model to normal troops. Plus, I used this Retributor armour on the chains hanging off his arm. To be honest, they may have a real name, I'm not au fait with the Necron lore, but it's something I'm looking into and I'll learn more about. So for the moment I'm just calling them chains. Please, you know, if you know the real names of these things down below, let me know. Now moving on to the gun and a few other areas, and for this I went for another metallic, this one being Lead Belcher. It's one of my favourite silver colours that I have in my collection, I realise there are more available from Citadel, but I'm trying to use what I have for the moment and seeing what I can create with them. Again with this paint being a base, I used it about three times on all these areas to give it a real chance to soak in and get that pigment shining through. So this is for the blade, the end of the gun. I really thinned this one down to ensure it didn't kind of go too crazy over everything. Again, putting it onto my tile and using that as the base. Not wanting to wreck my wet palette. Just kept this quite nice and simple. After that, I went with Abaddon Black for the gun fill in some of those details in between the green light areas. The black always goes on really quickly and really nicely. I love it as a colour and I think Citadel do a great job with their blacks. It almost went on so quick I just used it a couple of times. And then I used that in his ribs. I've seen guides online where they recommend just leaving the shade for that area. I really wanted to bring it out and darken that part properly, so 
I chose to paint it as well as using the null noir later. A few more layers with the black, again, focusing on three. It's still a base color, so ensuring that everything is covered. And being over white, it's very easy to see any parts that I might have missed. Now moving on to using our shade of Nuln Oil. There are other options available. There's even one they specifically recommend for Necrons, but it's not in my collection and I really like Nuln Oil. And I'm really happy with how it came out, so I'm glad I chose to stick with what I have. The shoulders were really nice area as well. There are a few little dents built into the plastic mold. So the Nuln Oil just found those points and absolutely made them beautiful. This I used nearly everywhere apart from the white parts because those I really wanted to stand out brightly in the Tesseract glow. Even with the Nuln Oil, a little bit like I did with the Space Marine before, I did about three layers again to ensure that everything was covered how I wanted it to. Had a dry brush spare so if any parts were just overdone, I could easily pull that back up. Switching to the technical paint now, this Tesseract Glow, I'd never actually used it before, so it was a nice experience. It needs a lot of shaking up to get right in the bottle. When you buy it, I thought it was just going to be this bright green, but it's mainly yellow with a base of green. So I had to use an army painter bearing ball to really mix that up and shake it for a very long time. When painting the green here, I used a very small army painter brush and made sure I went over each area a few times. Some parts I actually even repainted white using a white scar as a layer paint and then went back over with the Tesseract Glow just to ensure it really stood out. I like the Tesseract Glow so much I even used it on the eyes in the end. They had about three touchovers to get them right properly and I gave a slight dot with the white scar to then go back over to add a slight glow effect to everything. The Tesseract Glow didn't actually shine as brightly as I thought it would at first, so I ended up doing a few layers of this as well just to ensure it had everything I wanted. It did have this lovely blend from yellows to greens, but at certain parts, especially on the gun, I really wanted just the green to shine through. And I found that by going over and over it eventually switched to the green and avoided the yellow completely. Adding a few highlights to the end of the gun now, this was using a layer paint of Iron Breaker and actually mixed in some White Scar and some Screaming Skull layer paint as well. Just making sure the blade shines up really brings it through and trying to wet blend some of the areas on the blade. Looking for something to highlight the Rune Lord Brass, I chose to go for Balthasar Gold. It is a base layer, but the bright red on it really shone out to me and added something slightly different to this model. I was careful to use it only in small areas and when I made a mistake I went back over with the Rune Lord Brass and then finished it all up with some more Null Oil to make sure that it mixed in properly. For the base I took some texture paint, the Armageddon Dust, and covered the whole base with it. I wasn't too worried about how technically it stood out or anything, just that it wasn't this straight basic plastic base. I then highlighted the gun with some Eshing Grey and a little bit of Screaming Skull. On the stone I used Eshing Grey and dry brushed with some Screaming Skull, which then I also used on the actual skull attached to the rock as well. The skull I started off with some White Scar and then top that off with a layer paint of Screaming Skull. For the eye sockets I used some more Eshing Grey and then covered the whole thing with a Nuln Oil with the heavy droplets into the eye and the nostril areas. I then dry brushed the entire model with some Iron Breaker just to bring out parts of the metal and make it shine and then cut back that over again with more Rune Lord Brass just to take it down and dim it down a little bit more where it went a bit heavy. I think this is what took me the longest time because I wasn't trying to be a perfectionist but I was trying out new things and trying different colours on new models and just seeing what worked. In the end I'm really happy. 
and excited to use this same scheme on my other Necron models. Again, just covering the entire thing with another layer of Nuln Oil, just to make sure all my adjustments blended together nicely and weren't too obvious where I'd made mistakes. I dry brushed the base with a very light scattering of white scar paint. I then covered the entire base once more with Nuln Oil. This was to keep it in the same lighting fixtures of the main models so it didn't look too out of place. Finally, painting the base black around the brim. You can do other colours, but black currently is my go-to choice, and with the darkness of this model, I really think it suited it. Finally, I wanted to add a few more touch-ups with the Tesseract Glow. This was just for any parts that made a little bit too dark and really wanted to make pop. I took them back to White Scar and then added the Tesseract Glow again. I'm really pleased with how this model turned out and excited to paint more Necrons in the future. I think it's time that I moved on to one of my main armies. So I'm bringing out the Adeptus Custodes. These guys are going into a solar watch colour scheme. So it's going to be using a lot more white than these darker characters I've been painting recently. So we'll see how that goes. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you again next time. Bye.